It's February and love is in the air. But if you're in a relationship with the wrong sales platform, things might not be feeling like roses in boxes of chocolates. Not to worry, Sales Hub from HubSpot is your knight in shining tech armor. Because darn it, you deserve to feel the love long past cuffing season. So it's time to break up with your old sales platform and fall head over heels in love with Sales Hub. With Sales Hub, closing deals is no big deal. Head to HubSpot.com slash sales to try it for free. Good morning, everyone. It's Thursday, February 15th. I'm John Weigel here with Ben Berkeley, and this is the Hustle Daily Show. Today's big story centers around the small island of Anguilla. This half of Washington, D.C.-sized nation is bringing in heaps of cash from the AI industry all for one reason. They own the .ai domain. But is this just a happy coincidence, and how much money are they really making in this AI boom? We'll chat about all that in a bit, but first, let's give you the hits and headlines today across business and tech. Starting us off today, Mickey Mouse and his Disney friends might just be unionizing. The 1700 Disneyland employees who play characters at the theme park want to join the Los Angeles Actors Equity Association Union. And this is a big surprise to me because I thought they were already on it. Next, over to crypto and what feels like a blast from the past. Bitcoin has apparently bounced back. Bitcoin's price has risen over 21% year over year, reaching a market cap of over $1 trillion today, which is the first time since late 2021. It's been a while. Over to self-driving cars. Waymo revealed it issued a software recall in December after two of its self-driving cars hit the same pickup truck. Due to the angle at which the truck was being towed, the car's software couldn't predict its movements. And we can just add that to the list of bad PR Waymo's had recently. Moving over to Airbnb, Airbnb is set to use GamePlanner.ai, the startup it acquired for about $200 million in November, to build a personalized adaptive interface, which is described by CEO Brian Chesky as, quote, the ultimate concierge. And finally, Snoop Dogg and Dr. Dre finally did the completely obvious thing, launching a ready-to-drink canned cocktail called, you guessed it, Gin and Juice, And this is 30 years after their hit song debuted. I wonder what they've been up to since then. All right, on to the main story today. We're talking about the small island nation of Anguilla. By sheer chance, this nation has been raking in the cash from tech businesses around the globe. Why? Because all .ai domain rights are firmly in their grasp. Ben, how did this happen? Well, first off, let us just note, this is a story about AI that is not going to have any anxiety about how it's going to end you. Very good. So let's enjoy this moment because we don't get that often. Okay, so we're talking about Anguilla, which is an island territory. It is a British territory. It's in the Caribbean. It is about 35 square miles. That's half the size of Washington, D.C. It has about 16,000 people population-wise. So this is a really small island, but as it goes in this world, we have the Internet Assigned Numbers Authority, the IANA, you might have heard of them in the 1980s. They started assigning two-letter domains to nations and territories. And, you know, these are things we're all really familiar with. That's, you know, when you see a website in Australia.au or Canada.ca right. or Japan.jp. In 1995, Anguilla pulled .ai, which Initially, they probably were like, yeah, whatever. That's pretty big for the nation today in terms of its economics. Yeah, pretty big um, coincidental (laughs) that happened back then that has really paid off big nowadays. They actually, I'll I'll note, they also got really lucky because before they got that, Ascension Island, which is another British territory, which Ascension Island, they actually have the AI initials. You would think they'd have a good shot at, at that. They ended up with .ac, which is actually not bad for them. That's, you know, a lot of academics, uh, institutions use that, I believe. Sure. And uh, I imagine air conditioning companies as well. Oh, my God. Yes. That if you're not, if you run an air conditioning business and you're not doing a .ac, what are you doing? What are you doing? But yes, Anguilla got .ai and it has been a really, we can go back about five years when they were making two point. $9 $9 million annually from the domains. And that was covering the salaries of 
basically half of their educators, so teachers, administrators, teachers assist- assistants, is covering all their salaries, which is a really nice little cottage industry. The thing that we're really interested in about today, they are now making that amount 2.9, about $3 million per month on this. So things have really rocketed for them. Wow. Yeah, things have really ramped up, it sounds like. I mean, it makes a lot of sense. 2018, I mean, I guess there was a little emphasis on AI back then, but now it's every day. It's every hour. We get AI news. We get companies getting started. We get new websites. We get new domains. So it just makes a lot of sense. And I, I'm actually glad that some small island is actually benefiting from all of that. Yeah. I mean, so the guy who manages their domain registrations gave an interview and he said that it's about a third of the government's budget at this point. That's only going to increase. They are expecting to make $6 million per month on this starting next year when a lot of domain renewals start paying out at a higher rate. And then they're also seeing sales obviously just continue to ramp up that like since ChatGPT was debuted in November, 2022, sales increased four times over in the following five months. So this has been really big for them. The territory has been able to even pay off some debts because of this. Wow. Yeah. I mean, it sounds really great for them and it sounds like they're doing a good job nowadays. Has there ever been a time where they almost messed it up or has it always been sunshine and roses? It has not always been sunshine and roses. They actually, one of the wrinkles of the story that I love, and it kind of just shows you how perilous just like what seemed like small decisions are at the time can really play out for your country. In the early days of owning the .ai domain, a company from Taiwan approached and convinced the government to hand over admin control of its, you know, domain registry. And they were promising that they'd just like make all the money because in Mandarin, I believe I means love. And so they were like, we're gonna get all these companies to be like, look at us with our .love domain. <laughs> That didn't happen, not surprisingly to anyone. I mean, uh, I just can't really imagine if we saw that in English, I would kind of be like, that's corny. No, thanks. Um, but yeah, it didn't go so well. Then that company ghosted Angolan officials for a few years and it eventually came around where they got to reclaim this this ownership of these domains, which obviously then fuel a third of their government budget. So that just shows you if someone approaches you trying to make money off of something, maybe, maybe, maybe hold on or really vet that a little bit more because it can really pay off in the long run if you, if you maintain your assets. Yeah. And, and speaking of paying off in the long run, you know, this dot AI thing is probably huge right now. Are there any other domains from around the world that have really popped off, you know, like I'm, I'm thinking about any other country that could have had like a domain that did really good business for them. And I, I can't think of one right now. I, well, I can. Uh, .tv, oh, which was yeah. Tuvalu, which is in the Pacific. They actually opened up their registry. And I believe within the first, I want to say 20 years, it accounted for about 10% of their government revenue. So the, there's like little blip rushes on the vanity domains, they can really pay off for you. I can't really imagine what else would be ahead. So there's probably some small nation out there just being like, boy, I really hope dot GR takes off for some reason. I mean, people are really into like bears, people really like, I don't know what that's all about. Like, yeah, yeah. It's like, I, I guess that could happen, but yeah, it's, it's definitely been a big windfall for Tuvalu and then for most recently for Anguilla. Yeah. Well, I mean, th- this is super fascinating. Now I'm trying to rack my brain and I'm going to think about other countries that have had this happen in some kind of way or other two letter ac- acronyms that I could draw together for this. It's going to be my yeah, thing. It's got to be a thing. Well, I'm going to be looking down that list of all the two letter domains for the rest of this day. So oh, thank yeah. you so much for this lack of productivity that now you've inspired me to have. Amazing. I'm happy we got that. All right. That's going to do it for us today. Thanks for tuning into the Hustle Daily Show. We're a proud part of the HubSpot Podcast Network. Our editor today is Ezra Trupiano, and our executive producer is Darren Clark. 
We've got a lot more tech and business coverage in our newsletter. If you're not subscribed, go get yourself signed up at thehustle.co slash email. And we'll see you tomorrow. Hey, everybody, it's John from The Hustle Daily Show. I've been listening to an awesome podcast recently called Marketing Made Simple. It's hosted by Dr. J.J. Peterson, and it's brought to you by the HubSpot Podcast Network, which is the audio destination for business professionals. Marketing Made Simple brings you practical tips to make your marketing easy and more importantly, make it actually work. I was listening to an episode recently that really stuck with me, and it was called How Real Should You Be at Work? In that episode, Dr. J.J. Peterson and his co-host, April Sunshine Hawkins, talked with Ashley Menzies Babatunde, who is the creator and host of her own podcast called No Straight Path, and it explores the human stories behind success. But on their podcast, Ashley dove into the importance of embracing humanity in the workplace and acknowledging that setbacks and emotional challenges are a natural part of everybody's daily life. So I found that really, really impactful. You can listen to Marketing Made Simple wherever you get your podcasts.